This is Dr. Matt Barber of Alabama Orthopedic Clinic. We are proud supporters of Ransom Reprogram, Ransom Ministries, and all of the good work that they do in our community. If you would like to learn more about us, check us out at alortho.com or barbertotaljoint.com. You can also hear more from me personally on the Ortho Real podcast. Thank you again for allowing us to be involved with Ransom Ministries and all of the great work that they do. Hey, welcome to the Ransom Experience. My name is Matt Armbruster, Executive Director of Ransom Ministries. You're going to hear stories from people that we've served and people that serve alongside us, as well as those that we partner with throughout our community. You're going to hear about decisions they made throughout their life and things that happened through different avenues of their life that caused them to go down a path that they didn't see themselves going. And then also those decisions that they have to make on a daily basis to stay away from those decisions that they made in the past. Ransom Ministries empowers people to utilize their God-given gifts and talents in their career and for their community. All along the way, we learn how to help those close to us and also maybe even help ourselves. This is real. This is raw. This is Ransom. This show is brought to you by Ransom Recycling, your number one choice for electronic recycling in Mobile, Alabama. Help reduce waste in our landfills by recycling all of your unwanted, unused, and non-working electronics. Ransom Recycling is a division of Ransom Ministries that is helping to put men and women back to work. Check out RansomMinistries.com for a complete list of acceptable items. Drop-offs and pickups can be easily scheduled through the website. Please note that we are not accepting TVs at this time. Ransom Recycling, open 8 to 3, Monday through Friday. Help our planet while helping men and women re-enter the workforce. With every start, we are born again. Open your heart, spend less time in your head. Hey, welcome to the Ransom Experience where we talk to different people that are going through our program, that have been in our program, um, that volunteer with us. And then we just do some talk sometimes. We went through our reprogram not long ago. And today I was thinking about, I haven't really done anything on our book. We have Life Outside the Boat, which was an experiential book that kind of told about our experience of walking. And, you know, last um, couple of weeks ago, you heard from Tara and I that kind of how things got started. And I kind of wanted to show you kind of our philosophy as a ministry of what serving was like. So as we um, went about our, you know, we, you learned kind of where we started, everybody always wants to ask, you know, well, how... Do we serve people where we won't hurt them? And there's actually a book out that said When Helping Hurts where it talks about, you know, free handouts, giving or whatever can hurt people more than it can help them. So today I wanted to kind of go through our book a little bit. Um, And the there's different stages as we go along in this um, process. And there's got to be a balance. There's got to be a balance between justice and mercy and and all the different things that that go along with serving people because if all we are is one or the other then we miss out on what God really had for us to do and what how Jesus served other people so first of all you know you got to build that trust in them and we talk a lot about proximity about being in around people that um aren't like us so that we can get to where we can understand them and we can show that we care and So then we go proximity, and then we have attunement where we're attuned to the things that they're talking about. We're attuned to their story. We're attuned to their situation. You know, many of the guys that come through our program, actually dealing with one today, deals with things that we don't normally have to deal with. And so, you know, you never know why they have a bad attitude or why they, you know, are showing up late all the time or why they, you know, just leave work without telling anyone or whatever. It's because of upbringing. It's because of things that have gone on in their lives. And until we hear their story, we really are going to have no influence on them. We're not going to be able to influence them as a person until we actually can see and be attuned to what they're going through. 
So first of all, we have to earn that trust. We have to trust that we're in where we're supposed to be. And then also we have to um, then build our faith through that trust. So as we build our faith in what we're doing, um, then they have faith in us that we're really there for their good and we're really there for their help to help them. So what we've learned over the last few years is that there has to be a balance. You know, I can tell you stories about mercy and about how we have shown too much mercy at times. So the, the definition of mercy is to love deeply and compassion, have compassion and be kind. So, you know, why, why are we here? There's a down downhill slope to giving, right? So when we show too much mercy, so we're, you know, let's just use an example of the cafes. People come in the very first time, they're very appreciative. They they want to um, give back. They want to show you how much they appreciate this meal that they're getting at the cafe, at Ransom Cafe, which was, you know, our first project. So they are very compassionate. Well, then they come in again, they get a, a free handout or free meal, and then they're more expectant. They're expecting it to be good. They're expecting it to be um, perfect. And then they, you know, slowly go downhill from there. If we keep on giving it to them for free and don't require anything back. And I know the Bible, people always say, oh, well, Jesus, you know, his salvation is free, which I don't agree with. I really don't believe that it's free. I believe that it costs something because it says to pick up your cross daily. It says to do the things you're supposed to do. And that takes sacrifice. That is a cost that there is to following you. Many times you lose friends that you might've had. That's a cost. So it isn't free. And I think we tell people that wrongly and then they get into the middle of it and they realize, Oh, this is way harder than I thought. I thought this was going to be a free gift. And then they give up because it's too hard. So Jesus, he really, he set it up where he, actually try to talk us out of those things. And I I think that that's what we have to um, understand is that he wants people to follow him in spirit and truth, not because they've been coerced through fancy words and fancy music and all that. He wants us to come because we want to come. And that's what the really, really the mercy part is all about. So there's that downhill slope. And then we have justice, right? Okay, someone takes advantage of us, and now we're going to put the hammer down. You know, we're going to say, oh, you got to follow all these rules. You got to do it my way. You got to do it the way we want to. If you do everything right, then I'm here for you. If you don't, then I'm not here for you. And that's the justice side. And there are times that, you know, justice is warranted, but it's a bunch of rules and regulations, my way or no way, and don't help at all because these people are lazy or we have strings attached to it. Hey, come to my church and I'll help you, or come to my belief system, and I'll help you, which I don't see anywhere in the Bible. I don't see that anywhere that it says that we're only supposed to be kind to those that believe the same way we believe. Man, if Jesus done that, he never would have been kind to me, because early on, I didn't believe nothing that that Bible said, or the people that were telling me it. So how can we say that, you know, we're going to help those that help us? That's easy to do. That's easy to help the people that like you. It's harder to help the people that don't like you. And so that's the justice part is what we have to work on. Let's just say we have total mercy. And I, I have some stories about that. So I have a situation where, you know, I have this lady that's coming in the cafes and she's volunteering and she's loving it. She's coming every day, looking forward to it, driving across the bay, coming over to Mobile to serve the homeless, to serve the poor. And she comes in and They're getting, you know, all this stuff. They're giving it to them. They're giving them food. They're giving them tea. They're giving them all this stuff. Well, then as these people come in for a long period of time, then they're like, oh, this tea's not sweet enough or this food's not hot enough. I want seconds. I want this. And she just got totally burnt out by it because she started taking offense to that because we were trying to do something that I don't feel like we were called to do, and it's not give away free stuff. We're not supposed to give away free stuff. We're supposed to partner with them in helping them out of that situation. Let them experience and participate in their own healing. And that's where we falter a lot of times in our ministries is that we want to give it to them and make ourselves feel better when ultimately we're hurting the people we're serving. It's not always a good thing to talk about, especially when you're going to organizations and they don't always invite me back, but I, I truly believe that. I believe that we hurt more people than we help than we than when we don't allow them to participate in their own healing. 
And so then you come to justice and, you know, you set all these rules and the regulations and you can only have so many bags of food and you can only come here once a month or you can only come here if you live in the zip code or, or and, you know, we have to put these parameters on because people have taken advantage of it when really it was us that caused the problem in the first place. And now we we're, we're trying to reconcile it or we're trying to fix it by adding a bunch of rules and st- flash or throwing justice on it which i think it ruins it even more so i had guys you know coming up to our clean machine and i'll tell you this story real quick this man comes up and i'm washing clothes and i pull his clothes out of the washer to put in the dryer and the crack pipe falls out and i get mad about it and i throw his wet clothes into a bag i walk over to that gentleman and i throw his bag down i said i will not do your laundry anymore as long as you're doing this and i held up the crack pipe and i felt really proud of myself because i had thrown justice on them they had taken advantage of me too long you know and i'm supposed to be this big christian ministry founder and all this stuff and here i am throwing justice on this man well i can tell you a story about for three years, I saw this gentleman. I would see him at the bus stop in my neighborhood, and I'd see him out in my area, and I always had bad thoughts about him. Oh, man, he's probably out here doing no good. You know, he's just taking advantage of the system. And I did that for three years, and one day I remember sitting at the clean machine, which is a laundry and shower trailer that we um, had, for those that don't know what that is. And I'm sitting there, and this guy, I see him, and I'm like, oh, man, here he comes. He's going to want something for free. And he sits down and <clears throat> he says, you remember me? I said, oh, yeah, I remember you. And he said, can you, uh, will you listen to me now? And I said, sure, I'll listen to you. All smug and higher than he was or whatever. And he said, you know, that day when you found that crack pipe of mine, um, you know, I had a roommate that was struggling with um, a crack addiction. And I saw that pipe laying on a counter in our apartment. Um, and so I put it in my pocket so that he wouldn't continue to smoke crack. And I was trying to help him, but you wouldn't listen to me. And I'm going to tell you right then, I realized, you know, <laughs> this justice thing ain't going to work. I felt about big as a inch, right? Because here I am again, this supposed to be Christian gentleman judging people before I really even listened to them. So that was transforming in me. I'm, I'm, I'm not glad it happened, but I'm glad it happened because it changed the way I looked at some things. And I'm going to tell you. So then <clears throat> I went back and I looked and I said, you know what? What about how can we fix this? So then you get into the word balance. You know, we all know about balance. If you, So what balance is is, it, is, is that things are equal, right? Things are the same. So when we're trying to balance mercy and justice, I believe that you need to look at Jesus. I mean, that that's the dude that could tell us how to do it. If we're really Christians and we really want to walk in that walk, we need to look at him who's supposed to be our model. So I go to John 5 and I think about this pool. Well, first of all, let's go let's 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 back up a little bit. Let's look at when he fed the 5,000. You know, these dudes are out there, he's preaching, and there's all these people, and his um, disciples come up to him, man, how, we need to send these people away, how are we going to feed them? We don't have the, the money to buy all the food that we need for them, and we don't have the food, so so let's send them away, and Jesus said, have them sit down, have them sit down, I'm going to feed these people, I ain't going to ask them for no ID, I'm not going to ask them for anything, I'm not going to ask them what church they're going to, I'm not going to ask them even if they're going to follow me, I want to feed these people, just feed them. So they fed him, and you all know the story. They had all this food left over. And then about two chapters later, I guess it was, these people are looking for Jesus again. And Jesus had sailed off into the water, and he went over to an island, and he was over there. And and so they found him, and they come up to him, and they said, Teacher, teacher, where you been? And he said, Man, you ain't looking for me for nothing to fill your belly. He goes, But I got something better. And so, see, if you see, the first part was mercy. He took care of their need. He took care of what they needed. They needed to eat right then. But then when they came back and he realized, hey, these guys are, and, and he knew, they're coming just to get what they want. He, he said, no, I'm not going to give you that this time. But what I do want to give you is something that will feed you forever. And see, that's how we have to be as ministries. That's how we have to be as people is we have to say, you know what? I'm going to help you with your need, but I'm not going to help you stay in that need. We're going to figure out how to get you out of that. 
So that's the balance, right? And then you think about this dude that's um, been laying at this pool. He was invalid. He was sick or whatever it was, and he was struggling. And there was this pool that if you got into it and the water was stirred, it would heal you. And he's been going years and years and years, and Jesus walks by, and he says, hey, man, do you want to be well? Man, no dub, dude. I've been laying here for years, 30 years, whatever it was, and you want to ask me this dumb question, do I want to be well? I mean, any of us would have said, oh, yeah, I want to be well. I want to be well. But what what did the dude say? He didn't say that. He said, well, you know, I, I keep people keep getting in front of me. I can't get in the water in time. He keeps making excuse after excuse after excuse. And then, then what did Jesus do? Oh, he walked over to him and he picked him up. He said, oh, I'm so sorry. Everybody's treating you bad. Let me pick you up and let me put you in the water. No, that's not what he did. He said, get up and get into that pool and be well. Right? He didn't do it for him. He let him do it. But he had a hard conversation and said, no, man, you've been whining about this for too long. Get up and be well. And the man got up and he was well. Or you got the dude that's been being carried to the temple gate and he'd been begging for his whole life for money. So obviously he was getting it because he'd been begging for it. You know, I see guys on the street corners, you know, giving, asking for money. I'm not a big proponent on giving cash money. What I'm a big proponent on is getting to know that person. So if I see someone on the corner, I'm going to say, hey, man, I ain't got no money for you, but, hey, I'll take you over here and we can have a cup of coffee or we can have some lunch. And you can find out really quick who wants to really get off of that. But this dude, he's, he's kneeling down. He's, he's, he's being brought there. He's an invalid, and he's been brought there by other people, and he's begging for money, and he sees these uh, disciples coming by, and he says, hey, have mercy on me or whatever it was. I don't remember exactly what it was. I'm not a Bible scholar, but I, I do remember the story. And he comes by, and I think it's Peter and John. They look at him, and he's like, oh, yeah, I'm going to get some money. And Peter and Peter says, Peter and John, they say, I think that's who it was. I, I, I can't remember exactly. But y'all can look it up. And he says, man, I ain't got no silver or gold, but I got something way more valuable than that, and I'm going to give it to you right now. And see, that's the thing. He didn't just give it to him. He showed him another way. So when we're out there and we want to give something away, let's get to know that person first. Because what that is, is that's a needs-based relationship. And we have needs-based relationships. Those relationships go away. We're all in the need of a relationship. Every single one of us wants a relationship with someone. And if that has to be through needs, then then we're going to have them. But I'd much rather it be balanced and me understand and you understand where that person's coming from and that we go through those stages of helping people. Because it's okay to have mercy It's okay to have justice, but really it comes down to let's balance both those down so that we can serve people the way that Jesus wanted us to serve them. We try to do that at Ransom. I screw up all the time. I shared a story. I can share another crack pipe story about balance. Have the dude come in, same situation, doing his laundry, crack pipe falls out. I go over to him. I give his clothes back, and I said, "I, I can't watch you kill yourself, man. I'm here for you. I love you. I care about you. I'll get you in rehab if you want to go, but I can't keep enabling you to do this. And he got mad at me and cussed me out. And, um, but about three months later, he come walking up and he said, I'm tired of this, Matt. I need help. You said you'd help me. Can I get some help to see how it was handled differently and how it was handled the way that I feel like God had wanted us to made it so much better. The man got help, went to rehab, He's doing really well, and that's how it works. That's how balance works. We have to have hard conversations. See, it's so much easier just to give away something free and say, hey, I'll see you next week, or I'll see you whenever, and I don't have to get involved in your sticky mess. I just give you something free, pat myself on the back, and we go about our way instead of sitting down and saying, hey, man, why do you need this? How can I help you not need this? How can I help you get over the need to – to have to have these services because our ultimate goal as nonprofits should be to put ourselves out of business, not make ourselves needed more. So I hope that you learned something through this. I just felt like I needed to share this today and, 
and hopefully you will see that, hey, there needs to be a balance, and that's how we do it, man. We, we have to balance the mercy and justice, and we have to look to Jesus when we're trying to figure out how to serve someone, and he will show us the way. So I'm sitting here, and I'm thinking about, you know, when I played ball and hurt my knee or whatever, and, man, they gave you this pain medicine right when I got hurt, and it was amazing. It helped me. But what kind of doctor would he have been if he would have just kept, hey, every time you hurt, every time you're in need, hey, come get this pain medicine from me? Well, it wouldn't have been good. So instead, I had had a good doctor, and he sent me to this person I call the devil, um, the physical therapist. I apologize to all my physical therapist friends out there. But they make you do things you don't want to do. They make you do things that you don't think you can do. And you cuss them and you yell them and, and get at them and, and you say they don't like you and you think they're out to hurt you. And But in the end, that you realize that they made you do those things so you could get back to where you were. And that's what it's like with ministry. Sometimes we have to tell people and ask people to do things they don't even think they can do. But if we continually just give them free handouts to keep them where they are, if we keep giving them free food and we keep giving them free whatever, then we're going to keep them where they are. Then we're just like that doctor that just gives out pain medicine when we're hurting. Instead of sending us to someone that can help us get back to where we were and eventually develop us into something we didn't even think we could do. So I hope you enjoyed it. Come out to our shop and, and tour at 320 South Craft Highway. Also, you can get this book, Life Outside the Boat, on Amazon. Just search it and then find it. We also have them in stock out here. And uh, just read it. It's kind of our experiences of where we've been, how we how we serve. It's a good book to use as a Bible study as well for a group. And uh, hopefully you can get that. Again, it's on Amazon.com, Life Outside the Boat. Until next week, go ahead and share this with all your friends. Share a podcast. Um, rate us. And uh, we hope that you will join us next week when we bring you another story or we bring you another teaching. We appreciate you and God bless. See you next week. Too many days in the darkness Without a glimpse of the light Running tired and broken and scared But I swear I'll never give up the fight